Dr. Venkatesh Varun to come, please. Good afternoon, everybody. I am presenting a retrospective study of on arrival blocks for acute traumatic isolated major crush injury, monomelic upper limb for preoperative pain relief. Major crush injuries to upper limb are extremely painful and they bleed a lot. So handling, examination, radiographs aggravates the pain and stress response in the patients. The conventional pain management in the form of opioids or sedatives produces a lot of side effects like nausea, vomiting, drowsiness and respiratory depression. Once the patient is drowsy, it's very difficult to explain the patient the magnitude of the injury that he has got and, and very difficult to explain about the reconstruction or amputation option to the patient because he is drowsy. In our hospital, all patients with such injuries are managed with a brachial plexus block. We innovated on a protocol of achieving pain relief on arrival of these patients in the pre-operative room itself. After a block, examination, investigations like x-rays, planning and communication are all made easy. Same anesthesia is used for immediate surgical intervention. The aim of the study is to find out the safety and efficacy of the on arrival block. So it's a retrospective study of 93 consecutive patients who received the on arrival block between January 2010 to January 2012. Materials and methods after getting approval from the institutional review board, case sheets of, 20, 20, uh, case sheets of 95 consecutive patients who received on arrival block from January 2010 to January 2012 were analyzed. Here, the pre-block and post-block VAS codes were analyzed for checking the efficacy of the procedure. Pre-block and post-block vital parameters were analyzed for assessing the safety of the procedure. Vital parameters analyzed are heart rate, blood pressure and SpO2. Any other drug or procedure related complications are also analyzed. All ASA grade 1 and grade 2 patients with acute monomelic upper limb injuries coming for emergency surgery are included in this criteria. All ASA grade 3, grade 4, patients with brachial plexus injuries, patients with polytrauma, patients not giving consent are excluded in the study. On arrival block in our hospital is always done in the ante room of the operation theater. It should never be done in a place where there are no facilities to resuscitate the patient. Before giving on arrival block, we always do a primary survey is done, brachial plexus injuries are ruled out, nerve injuries in the injured limb is examined by the surgeon in the form of sensory and motor test and the nerve injuries are documented in the case sheet. An IV cannula is inserted and the basic blood tests are sent. How we do a non-arrival block? After getting an informed consent with all aseptic and universal precautions, the monitors attached are pulse oximeter, non-invasive blood pressure, ECG monitor. Here we give supraclavicular and axillary block combined or given. We take 20 ml of point papers in bupivacaine, 10 ml of xylocaine with tetanolin, 10 ml of distilled water. So the total volume is 40 ml. We give 20 ml in the supraclavicular region and 20 ml in the axillary region with ultrasound guidance. Parameters monitor are pulse rate, blood pressure, systolic and diastolic, VAS score before and after the block. Only after the block and after adequate pain relief, the injured limb is moved or examined. X-rays are taken only after the block with adequate pain relief. Beyond pain relief, on arrival block acts as a part of resuscitation. If the injured limb has got bleeding, the hemorrhagic control can be easily done by applying a tunicate and it's very good if the injured limb is painless. Reconstruction or amputation is discussed with the patient and the attenders after the block and there is rapid transfer of patient to the operation theatre. In our study, we have demographic results. Males, have, males are 78, females 17, ASA grade 1 86, ASA grade 2 9, average age was between 31 plus or minus 11 years. The results show predominance of male patients and predominance of ASA grade 1 patients. The distribution of injuries, the, there is predominance of hand and wrist injuries. Regarding the results, safety, results of safety, these results were analyzed by two sample T tests which showed there is no significant change in the pulse rate, systolic or diastolic BP. Hence, shows this block is very safe. It significantly shows this block is very safe. And the VAS course pre-block pre was 6.7 plus or minus 1.5. Post-block is 0. 
which shows a significant clinical achievement in all the cases. Tunicate was used in 80% of 84% of the cases. The mean tunicate time was 76 minutes. The mean time of shifting the patient to OT on arrival to the hospital was 42 plus or minus 26 minutes. And this chart shows that 33 patients were shifted within 30 minutes into the operation theater after arrival to the hospital. And in more than, in 22, 22 cases, there is a delayed shift of more than 60 minutes because these are the patients having amputated limb which needs examination under the microscope which itself will take 32 minutes after the block. Discussion, all the conventional management has got, own its, has got all its own side effects but honorable block produces a conscious patient with a zero VAS score. Patient comfort level and confidence over the treating team is very good because he gets immediate pain relief on arriving the hospital. Hemorrhagic control for bleeding wounds is good. And this is an x-ray which is taken for a patient who has got a tight bandage of a crush injury hand. And before the block, it will take an x-ray. The before block, the, you can see the x-ray, the, all the carpal and metacarpal bones are crumpled. The cum itself is not seen. Whereas after block, once the bandage is open and after adequate pain relief, you take an x-ray, the carpal and metacarpal bones are very nicely seen and thumb is seen. So honorary block not only helps in uh, good quality of x-ray but also helps in good surgical reconstruction. So chemical sympathectomy following vasodilatation is good for microsurgical results. Hemodynamic stability is good. The cost of the the number of drugs used is less. The number of nursing personnel required for monitoring pre-op and post-op is also less. Complications as such due to brachial block are not there because we are using ultrasound guidance. No such complications are noted in our study. Conclusion, we conclude that on arrival block for preoperative pain relief is safe and effective. On arrival block produces conscious state with zero VAS score without cardiorespiratory compromise. On arrival block produces hemorrhagic control with tunicate and there is quicker shift of patient to the operation theater. What next? The other variables of on arrival block like cost effectiveness, duration of surgery, surgical outcome leaves a prospective study design which have already started in our hospital. These are the references which I have made and thank you. You have shown that there was no change in the pulse rate and the blood pressure. Did it surprise you? Because when the pain is relieved after giving the block, do you think that the tachycardia should subside and if it hasn't subsided, what is your explanation? There, there are very slight changes, but there is no significant change in the heart rate. Most of our patients, they come with a heart rate of 102, 105, then it comes to around 85, 90, and there is no further uh, drop in the heart rate or blood pressure. And because we started IV line and IV fluids is also given, and uh, so there is not much significant change in these patients. You said uh, 20 mils of... Uh local anesthetic for yes, supraclavicular yes, and sir. 20 mils for axillary. axillary. Was, uh, I mean, did you mean that both the blocks were performed on the same patient? Both, first we performed the supraclavicular block, then followed by that we give an axillary block. So it is one followed by axillary. Any specific reason why? Because I feel, in our institute we feel that the onset time of Pain relief is very fast when you combine two blocks, supraclavicular and axillary. So perhaps the next uh, study is to find out whether it's necessary to do two blocks versus just a, either an axillary or supraclavicular. Yes. Technique. So based on based on the data, what is the next step? Um, how? What are you going to uh, learn from this? retrospective data. It's a very nice uh, quality assurance data to show that you know, the complication rate is low, but what is the next step that would help you with the study data? Yeah, so probably the next step we'll stick on to a supraclavicular block. We'll study the effects of that. Then we'll also uh, see the cost effectiveness and the surgical results. Because the, once you apply a block and tourniquet, bleeding is less, the number of blood transfusion is less, we can study on that after giving block. What, what amount of resuscitation, what amount of blood transfusion he needed. Yeah, it is also that because the distribution of injuries we have seen, this predominant of hand and wrist injuries. Yeah. Two blocks.
Yeah, this is what I think. Thank you, sir.